All right, here's the back side of my Yaesu FT710. And notice that jack there, which says tuner or linear. Uh, if you, I also have an FC40 remote antenna tuner, and there's a control cable that plugs into that and goes to the tuner. But if I don't want to use the tuner, instead I can connect an external amplifier to it. Now, Yesu has an, an amplifier model number VL-1000, and it has an interface cable that connects to that, to the amplifier. And that controls the PTT, and I think it pre-selects the bands. It gets it set up for, so if you change a band on the radio, the amplifier changes the band. Um, if you want to run an external amplifier that's not a Yesu amp, they made it difficult. Because first of all, they got this little connector, and here it is. It's a mini den. I think that says, wait a minute, let me look at that. Six mail. Oh no, that's not it. <laughs> Uh, that's not it. It's a mini den, and that's an eight pin. So somehow I ended up with that six pin, but that's a mini den eight pin, and it's by Fillmore. I got it off from the internet, off from eBay, I think. Fillmore, mini den. So if you go searching for a Fillmore Mini Den 6-pin or and an 8-pin, you should find them. I think the 6-pin the six pin is used here. That's probably why I bought it. Uh, never mind this. This is something else. We're not going to talk. We're not going to talk about that. But anyway, that's the back of the, the radio. Now... The other thing they made difficult was is that this interface is very non-robust. If you want to connect a PTT line from there to your, let's say you got an alpha amplifier, commander amplifier, um, and uh, you know you, you got an amplifier that you really like, but it's not the newer and later technology with all for all the sensitive electronics that the new radios are are making. Or putting in their radios, making it difficult to interface to PTT. Um, you have to get a, you have to get a buffer. Now, I never bought a buffer, a PTT keyline buffer. I I never bought one. I made one. I've got a homemade amplifier. It's my homemade amplifier, and it works just fine on my Yesu. So I had to do that. Now I'll let you, you can, it's a two transistor. There's an LED on it. There's a blocking diode on it. There's, I don't know, 10 resistors on it, maybe more or less. There's a couple of little blocking capacitors. This is the connector that's in back of the radio. So when you get your Fillmore 8-pin mini den, that pin socket way out there is your ground. And then your TX is over here in this corner. TX ground, that is your PTT line. That's what keys this circuit right here. So it goes low. And it pulls that, when it goes low, it pulls that collector low. When the collector goes low, it pulls that base low. When the base goes low, that collector will go high. This goes out to the PTT relay in the amplifier. And it can be 12 volts, 24 volts. 
even 48 volts. I don't think much of them. I think most of them are 12 or 24 volts. And it sinks that relay low. It, it sends the relay to ground, which, which was kind of a standard on most of the amplifiers. So if you're going to run, again, an old school amplifier, a good old school amplifier, or even at some of the new ones that had the standard PTT circuit in them, it's not going to work unless you buffer it. And there's two things to this buffering. This, this port is, they're using a CMOS topography technology device that sends a, you can, and it's, it's programmable by the computer inside the radio. And so it'll make the pin the input or an output, but it's a CMOS technology. It doesn't like much over five volts. Maybe even, it might not even like it at that. It, it, it's, it's probably a 3.3 volt bus technology and it doesn't provide a lot of current. So your buffer has to do a couple of things. It has to, if you've got a relay that's 24 volts and you're trying to sync it, this line sinks, but it's not going to like that 24 volts in the receive mode. It's not going to like that at all. You'll probably end up damaging the radio. Um, you, need to, you need to line shift the voltage, which is what this does. It also... It also adds, it's a current buffer. So it's a voltage buffer and it's a current buffer. It needs to be both. Now there's a guy on eBay and I'll leave a link below. I, I don't, I've never bought any of this stuff. I don't know him. He's not paying me. Uh, it's the only body that I found that's selling an aftermarket buffer interface. And it's, uh, Radio Dan W7RF, and I'll leave a link. And he has an RBI radio, 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 something interface um, dash one model, and it's a little box. And it connects the box to the amplifier, and then he has an optional, he has that, he has this, he has that. Uh, but he's got it all made up. He's got this plug that goes into there, and then it comes out with an RCA connector. Do not plug that RCA connector into your radio. You will damage your radio. And don't, I'm sorry. If you plug this into your radio here, and you buy his, his cable, and you plug it in to there, and on the other end of it, it's going to be an RCA connector. And you, let's say you plug it into... Um, I don't know, an old school um, S SB1000. Yeah, an SB1000. Nice amp. Good amp. You're going to probably damage the radio. You need to have that buffer in between it, that buffer box. And I hope that his buffer box, I, I couldn't find any information on it, couldn't find any schematics. I hope that it shifts the line voltage coming, going to this TX ground connection that's is what PTTs the linear. I hope that connector, that connection in his box does a line shift and it provides a proper voltage. He says that it, it amplifies the current so it doesn't um, burn up the output device inside the radio, but it's got to have all this. It's got to have something similar to this. And, um, uh, Anyway, yeah, so then let's look at my back of my, uh, this is a uh, ICOM 7300, and this doesn't need all that buffer, special adapter, connector. They made it easy. What? Send. Send is what you connect to your PTT cable to your amplifier. And, and you probably have to go in the menu and set that up and turn that on. 
So if you got a 7300 and it's brand new and you, and you haven't turned that on and you hook it up to your amplifier and it doesn't key up your amp, you got to go in the menu and turn it on. That's that's easy. And I'm that's the newest ICOM I have. I've had I've got other older ICOMs and they all have that RCA connector. So most amps will have an RCA connector on the amp. So you get a male to male patch cord and you plug it in here and you plug it into the amplifier and you're set. Not so. Uh uh. Unless unless you want to use the VL1000, then it's this easy peasy. Away you go. Um, and again, I don't know if this Radio Dan fellow with his interface, it looks good, but I don't, I never tried it. And some amplifiers, some of the newer amplifiers, some of the Mercury's may have a built in PTT buffer circuit so that it will work. And I tried to look around on um, the Mercury website quickly. I didn't spend a lot of time there. I did not f find any information on what their amplifiers can be um, interfaced to. And I didn't see, you're going to need to, whatever you do, you're going to need a cable. And I didn't see the, the Mercury website listing any cables that you could use for their amplifiers to a 710. Um, even DX Engineering did not list. Now, they listed cables interfaces for the FTDX10 and the FDDX101MDs and all that, but they didn't list it for the newer radio, the which has been out for two years now, the, the 710. So anyway, uh, you got an amplifier, and you got a brand new 710. Be careful. Do your homework. Get a hold of your amplifier manufacturer and try and find out if they've got a buffered input. It's built into your amplifier, something like this, that will protect something like that. Um, and if they don't... Um, Ask them what they might recommend. You might even try and contact Yesu and say, hey, uh, you got any information? I'm going to hook up my my commander, three-tube commander export. <laughs> I want to hook it up to the back of my SP710. What do you what do you suggest? I don't know if they'll tell you anything or they'll tell you, uh, get your credit card out and buy an FL1000. Yeah, a v, no, VL1000. But anyway, the more you know, seven threes.